Uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Texas Street Stories, where we talk about what happens on these Texas streets. This is episode three of the rise and fall of the Tri-City Bombers. We will see that in these organizations, there are no loyalties or honor amongst thieves. Not only did the Tri-City Bombers become informants, they were working with rival gangs to take out their own fellow members for greed and the lust of power. The Tri-City Bombers became their own worst enemies, killing their own. New prospects were wary of becoming members as previous prospects had been killed and informed on. After the split, what was left of the Tri-City Bombers established stores in their sector under the protection of the Texas Syndicate. Not only were they paying for protection, but also the Texas Syndicate would supply drugs to the Tri-City Bombers, who would pay a 10%. Under the guidance of the Texas Syndicate, the Tri-City Bombers would implement the same paramilitary structure, meetings, and ranks. The Tri-City Bombers were on their way to becoming a powerful drug organization. The Texas Syndicate would utilize the Tri-City Bombers for home invasions, murder, robbery, anything and everything they needed done. They would use what the Texas Syndicate showed them to do on their own, which would later contribute to their downfall. What started out as a bunch of car thieves and purse snatchers quickly evolved into a criminal organization. The Tri-City Bombers would later start robbing their own. They would also set their own people up to get them locked up and steal their clients for themselves. The Tri-City Bombers also had a special relationship with the son of Lupe Trevino, the sheriff for the Tri-City area. The sheriff assigned his son Jonathan Trevino his own personal unit to go against drug trafficking. But Jonathan Trevino would later become the Mexican version of Denzel Washington in Training Day. More of him in a later video. With relationships like these, they were on their way to becoming an unstoppable organization. But like any organization, greed and the lust for power would be their own demise. Later, when reports from the Panama unit were released, it showed that high-ranking members of the Tri-City Bombers were working with the Panama unit. They would give information on fellow members to avoid prison and also to get fellow members locked up so they could take control of what the member had. So if you were doing financially better than your fellow member, you had a target on your back. Not only were they cooperating with law enforcement, they were also working with rival gangs to kill their own members. This is part three. Part four, We'll discuss some of the Tri-City Bombers' most notable crimes. Next episode, the Tri-City Bombers use a rival gang to take out one of their own high ranks.